hype. It's a word you may be hearing more frequently in recent months. And if there is one word that is often preceding it, that word is definitely AI or artificial intelligence. The current AI hype that we live in has been driven by rapid advancements in machine learning and neural networks. It has captured the global imagination, heralding both excitement and apprehension. AI's potential to revolutionize industries such as healthcare, finance, and transportation is a key factor fueling this enthusiasm. Breakthroughs in natural language processing, exemplified by models like GPT-4, enable machines to understand and generate human-like text, transforming communication, customer service, and data analysis. Autonomous vehicles powered by sophisticated AI algorithms promise safer and more efficient transportation, while AI-driven diagnostic tools enhance medical accuracy and patient outcomes, offering early detection and personalized treatment plans. In finance, AI's ability to analyze vast data sets in real time aids in fraud detection, risk management, and algorithmic trading. Moreover, AI's application in environmental monitoring and climate modeling provides crucial insights for sustainable development and disaster preparedness. This broad spectrum of potential benefits showcases AI's transformative power across various sectors, reinforcing the hype surrounding its development and integration into everyday life. However, this hype also brings significant concerns. Ethical considerations regarding privacy, bias, and accountability are paramount as AI systems increasingly influence decision-making processes. The fear of job displacement due to automation looms large, prompting debates about the future of work and the need for reskilling the workforce. Furthermore, the race for AI supremacy among global superpowers raises geopolitical tensions, underscoring the need for international cooperation in AI governance. The list of dangers is just as long as the list of benefits. The effects of AI have been loud, obvious, and overwhelmingly everywhere. This has been especially true for the content creation industry. Before most people even knew what ChatGPT was, content creation factories, influencers, and algorithm hackers were already pumping social media feeds full of AI steroids. It seemed like every other video in your reels, shorts, and feeds were either completely AI content or made using AI. And the content wasn't even remotely trying to disguise itself as human content either. You could easily tell if a piece of content was generated using AI. Videos were generated using AI. Scripts were generated. Voices were generated. B-roll was generated. Avatars were generated. Everything was generated. And I can't blame them either. Those content factories and algorithm hackers were simply doing what they do best. This still remains somewhat true today. Generative AI was intended to make content faster, cheaper, and more available, thus facilitating more time spent on our devices and the growth of our digital lives as AI makes us more connected to each other and to information more than ever before. In many ways, it has achieved this goal. And yet, despite mostly achieving this goal, it has already caused damage that is almost greater than any of its accomplishments. This damage has primarily taken shape in two ways. First, it has actually left people feeling more alone than ever before. With generative AI came an onslaught of new apps and startups promising an AI girlfriend or AI companion. Additionally, with more content being produced, there is more content to consume. As a result, our brains crave even more time doom scrolling through our feeds, keeping us connected to our phones, social media, and our digital lives. And yet, I couldn't find one study that found that more digital connection leads to a greater degree of happiness and satisfaction. A 2017 scientific study discussed fubbing or phone snubbing and how it creates a sense of social exclusion, ironically making individuals more reliant on social media to regain inclusion, but ultimately feeling isolated. A 2022 study explored the correlation between loneliness and social network abuse, highlighting how excessive social media use can exacerbate feelings of loneliness, especially among different demographics, such as students and the elderly. A 2019 study investigated the association between social media usage and loneliness among university students. 
finding no significant support for the hypothesis that social media usage mitigates loneliness. Lastly, a study in 2020 looked at older adults and found that while social media can increase social connectedness, it does not significantly reduce loneliness over time. AI has proven to an even greater degree than before that humans were created to be in community. Regardless of how introverted or misanthropic you might be, we all need real human connection. Hearing someone's voice in videos, seeing their pictures on their feed, and reading their messages in an app are all a part of what it means to be in community. But they are all neither sufficient on their own for being in community, nor are they necessary. Being with someone is a profound form of community in and of itself. In fact, it's so profound that I could build an entire video around the idea. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in that video. In our eagerness to connect, compiled with the big tech corporations that leverage that eagerness to their advantage, we have become more disconnected and alone. AI doesn't bring people together, at least not in the way it intended to. Although it may not have been intended that way, AI has become just another tool that keeps us apart and alone, just like social media has. The second and more noticeable way this has damage has taken place and shape in our society is in how it has not only indirectly robbed artists of the years and years it took for them to hone their craft, but it also has robbed them of dignity in many ways. I'm one of those artists myself. I've felt AI's effects in more ways than one. As a voiceover artist, I've seen less contracts coming through as a result of generated AI voices. It's cheaper and faster than hiring a real VO artist. As a video editor, I've seen AI cut, format, edit, and subtitle 30 videos in less than 10 minutes. As an illustrator, I've seen Midjourney, Gemini, Leonardo, and ChatGPT produce even better art than I ever could in mere seconds. Artists have already begun losing their jobs as new generative models are literally being trained to replace them. Soon, Sora and Runway AI will replace stock media production gigs. Suno AI already produces music that is near indistinguishable from anything you'd find on Artlist. The entire creative industry has been pummeled over and over again. And what's worse is that no one really asked for it or really wants it. Don't get me wrong, I make videos for a living, and I do recognize how AI has certainly made some parts of the video creation process easier. However, I've had conversations with many artists and content creators. Most people have no interest in seeing AI grow even larger than it already is. A recent study by the Academy for Animated Art found that 74% of artists say AI work is unethical. 55% of artists think that AI will negatively impact their ability to generate income. 73% of artists say that they wanted to be asked for permission before their artwork is used to train algorithms. AI's impact on the creative world is a growing problem. As the human element is further removed, art becomes something it never should be. It becomes generic, plastic, and manufactured. However, if you spend a lot of time scrolling through videos, you might notice the beginnings of a shift taking place, or at least the possibility of a shift. It's subtle, but it's growing. I call it the great unplug. If anything, AI has begun to have the opposite effect on culture that its developers intended for it to have. Rather than further solidifying our future as a digitally connected and augmented society, it has begun reminding us of those tangible aspects of our humanity. Specifically, I've begun seeing this shift in two ways. First, the content landscape of YouTube is slowly changing. YouTube, like the podcast world, has become quite saturated. Starting a channel in 2024 doesn't even remotely guarantee you the same success it would have in, say, 2012. Yes, there are way more people watching YouTube now more than ever. However, with more viewers comes more people fighting for their attention. According to Global Media Insight, there are over 113.9 million active YouTube channels. One source estimates the chance 
of reaching 1 million subscribers to be around 1 in 3,600 channels. Channels have to evolve in order to match the excitement and intensity needed to get a viewer's attention, or else it will fade away into an endless sea of mediocrity. As a result of such intense competition, channels become more like factories, pumping out content at an alarming rate. Videos have become manufactured and primed to take advantage of our brain's chemistry. AI has quickly become the bread and butter of this content industrialization complex. At the end of the day, YouTube is about the psychology of attention. Whoever can get the most of it wins the greatest following, or at least that's how it has been for some time. Creators like Sam Sullick and Dry Creek Wrangler School have rapidly grown in popularity over the last two years. Rather than being content that is flashy, polished, and manufactured for attention, it's simple and plain with little to no editing. It's almost reminiscent of the early days of YouTube vloggers. Back then, there weren't really editing teams or thumbnail designers. Anyone with a camera could create a following. It's hardly been five years since the AI boom of content creation, and yet half-baked AI content has already become exhausting and uninteresting. Why? Well, personally, I believe it's because at the end of the day, people love good stories. Good content creators don't just tell good stories, they are the stories themselves. In other words, they are the niche. Good stories create connections between people and cultures. Our intrinsic desire for human connection and storytelling has already begun to have its effect on AI. The second way I've begun to see this shift has a lot to do with dumb phones. Phones like these are minimal by design. They lack most of the features a smartphone has. Most dumb phones only give you access to the basics like texting, phone calls, and a calendar. This phenomena of new devices has only been trending since around 2020. It's a movement that is still growing today. Now, to be fair, dumb phones were not a direct response to generative AI. The issues plaguing our culture, which dumb phones hope to mitigate, have been growing for many years. However, I believe that AI has been accelerating the movement's growth. Why? Predominantly because of AI-generated misinformation. Not only has our digital world become inundated with manufactured content, but it has also become inundated with misleading information, fake videos, and false identities. If you spend any amount of time scrolling through social media, you've probably seen videos that look off, misleading, or keep you watching with the promise of something cool at the end only to deliver nothing. Coupled with the downsides of social media addiction, which have been growing for years, AI has simply added more fuel to the fire. Not only are we more depressed and more lonely than ever, but we're also more distrustful than ever. With such a vast amount of content and information being created on a daily basis, it's impossible to judge what is really true and what isn't, let alone finding the time to read and see everything that comes across your feed. It's exhausting and it has begun having an effect on culture. It's no mistake that liminal spaces and nostalgia grew in popularity around the same time. These are places that are sheltered from the onslaught of information and AI. They feel safe because they're microcosms of a world that isn't hyper-digital and hyper-connected. As a result of AI, places like YouTube and TikTok have turned into cheap product distribution centers. Furthermore, AI has exacerbated the already unhealthy effects of social media and smartphone usage on social development. The cultural reaction was almost immediate, and it's slowly growing. I can't tell you the number of videos that have popped up in my feed that touch on the issues of AI. I call this movement the Great Unplug because it touches at the heart of something I've said often to friends around me. Disconnect to connect. Perhaps the reason why nostalgia has become such a trend isn't just because millennials are growing older and are becoming more existential, but also because the past reminds us of a time where, although we may not have had more connections, we certainly had deeper ones. The Great Unplug is not only about reconnecting with what makes us human, 
but it's also about discovering the depth of those relationships that are built in person, outside of the digital world that we live in. To be fair, deep relationships can be found and built through our shared digital world. It happens all the time, and it's a wonderful thing. Likewise, AI is not solely terrible. It does have incredible benefits, and if used as a means rather than an end, it does have the potential to revolutionize how we make content as creatives. However, it may be the case that the Great Unplug is the only path forward by which AI will ultimately have a healthy role in the way that it shapes the future of our society. Disconnecting looks different for everyone. For me, it looks like being intentional about spending time with friends in person rather than on the internet. I try not to spend time during the day doom scrolling. I rarely post pictures or videos on social media. In fact, I hardly use social media at all. What does it look like for you? Maybe it's completely disconnecting for one day of the week or setting aside one part of your digital life each month. Whatever it may be, I really hope the Great Unplug is a beginning is a movement for all of us. In Season 3, Episode 6 of Star Trek The Next Generation, the Enterprise is caught in a trap, and it's up to Chief Engineer LaForge to find a solution. Using the ship's computers, LaForge creates a holographic simulation of Leah Brahms, an engineer who helped design the engine used in the Enterprise. Throughout the episode, AI Leah and LaForge grow increasingly close. It turns out Leah Brahms was everything LaForge was looking for in a woman. They work well together as a team and ultimately save the Enterprise. The episode ends with LaForge and AI Leah Brahms sharing a kiss. And yet the story continues. In Season 4, Episode 16, LaForge and Leah meet for real in person aboard the Enterprise. The interaction is awkward. The real Leah was almost nothing like the AI simulation LaForge worked with earlier. Yet LaForge was expecting her to be almost a facsimile of the AI Leah. Ultimately, Leah discovers the holographic simulation. She finds it invasive and unsettling, rightly so. Despite the tension, LaForge and Leah Brahms eventually gain a mutual respect for one another. So why was the real Leah Brahms so different from AI Leah? In the first episode, Season 3, Episode 6, the computer tells LaForge that the holographic simulation of Leah Brahms won't be a facsimile. Rather, there will be a 9.5% difference or margin of error in its simulation. This seemingly small percentage ended up making a huge difference in personality. Why? Commander Riker, when speaking to Captain Picard, put it best. Computers have always impressed me with their ability to take orders. I'm not nearly as convinced of their ability to creatively give them. These episodes, which aired back in 1989, by the way, highlight a fundamental truth about being human. The AI we create will always be an image of what we want it to be. It will always look good, sound good, and deliver good information. Yet the ability to innately understand the world make decisions based on intuition, fall in love, raise a family, join a cause, ask questions about life, is fundamentally what it means to be human. Just like AI Leah Brahms, generative AI is a simulation. It's meant to look like we want it to, and it's meant to do what we want it to do. Perhaps Picard put it best. You know, number one, you miss something not playing with model ships. They were the source of imaginary voyages each holding a treasure of adventures, manning the earliest spacecraft, flying an airplane with only one propeller to keep you in the sky. Can you imagine that? Now the machines are flying us.